<coughs> Awanuma, baby! We know times have been hard around the world, so we think it's time to reveal more about our upcoming 2020 games, and we want Breath of the Wild 2 to be the headliner. Is everything ready? Uh... Yeah, we're gonna need more time. <sighs> well, I guess we can do a direct mini. Nintendo lives! They have finally broken their silence, ending the longest drought between General Directs since its inception. A total of 204 days, 3 hours, 47 minutes, and 2 seconds, but who's counting? Needless to say, Nintendo fans have been dying to know what Nintendo has planned for the future of 2020. What surprise game announcements, highly desired ports, and hype-inducing sequels could Nintendo be hiding for the coming months? Surely this would be the Direct that answered it all. This 28-minute video would make the excruciating wait worth it. Right, Nintendo? It ain't much, but it's honest work. So perhaps the Direct Mini wasn't the typical first general Direct of the year that everyone was hoping for, but at the very least we got some much-needed updates on upcoming titles such as Xenoblade, Bravely Default, and Smash. Albeit barely. But to be honest, I'm a little disappointed with this Nintendo Mini. Sure, they labeled it Mini, trying to quell expectations, and I pressed the play button knowing a Mini wouldn't reveal anything grand, but a Direct Mini doesn't quite fill in that 204 days, 3 hours, 47 minutes, and 2 seconds gap. Or at least this one didn't. However, I understand the current world situation is rough, to say the least. Development for games has halted to near stops in some cases, I imagine. Any game that was expected to barely hit the holiday season is probably ready for a delay, or is hanging on to that holiday time slot for dear life. Although it's not like we would know if that's the case or not, since we know nothing after Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition, which looks fabulous by the way. I kiss you, Manoslav. You're so beautiful. I love you. What I'm trying to say is, Nintendo is cancelled in 2020. Hope you like Animal Crossing. No, what I'm really trying to say is, it's hard to be optimistic about Nintendo's future without an idea of their upcoming titles, especially in 2020. Of course, it's not all doom and gloom in Animal Crossing, and I think this Direct Mini is evidence of that, mostly because of the ports and updates coming to existing Nintendo games. First off, let's talk about the good of the Direct Mini, starting with Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition. If only I can time travel in real life, this goes above and beyond the Call of Duty for Monolith Soft. My word. They are putting every ounce of their talent into this game, and I love it. Not that I ever doubted them, but the amount of passion that they put into each of their titles, it leaves me shooketh to the bones! The quality of their work is just astounding to me. Yeah, maybe I'm a bit of a fanboy, let's let's face it. Xenoblade Chronicles is definitely a series near and dear to my heart, but there's a good reason for that. Every game I played by them has astounded me in one way or another. I've never been incredibly disappointed or even even moderately disappointed. Maybe There may be slight disappointments here and there, but for the most part, their games are fantastic. But I don't want to give too much of my thoughts away. I have a lot to say, but I want to save them for my next video. Trust me, it will be glowing. I can't wait. Let me see this. The battle between Fiora and Melia rages on in my heart, especially after watching this trailer. Also, they revealed the collector's sets for this game. You have a North American one, a Japanese one, a European one. I need the collector set. Not, not the pathetic excuse of a special edition that Nintendo of America calls the work set. No, 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 no. The collector set. That's where it's at. That poster, that steelbook, that vinyl. Looks like I'll be disguising myself as a British chap again, eh? What? Moving on to Bravely Default 2. Talk about gorgeous games. This is stunning breathtaking. Mostly the designs and the town layouts, the HD graphics, all of that is superb, especially in the trailer. I played the first one, not the second one. Uh, there's just, just too much to play at the time the second one came out, so I I ended up skipping it. Um, also because I hadn't finished the first one, <laughs> for various reasons. One of them being uh, the incredible grind towards the, the end when you have to go back to the first areas and all the enemy levels are like 5, 10, and you're like 50, 60 or something like that. It's ridiculous. You can't you can't grind like that. And so the bosses just kick your butt because you can't properly uh, grind. I have no... I, maybe that was just shows you how bad of a RPG player I am. I don't know. I liked it. I liked the story they were telling. Definitely some interesting moments and the characters are really great. But as long as that doesn't happen again, I am totally excited for Brevi Default 2. I've always loved the gameplay. I think Octopath Traveler took that Bravely Default gameplay and really approved upon it. 
uh, made it even better game. So I'm hoping that it looks more like Octopath Traveler and a little less like Bravely Default. I know there's supposed to be two separate series, but Octopath Traveler's combat is just so smooth and quick and, and great. I hope that Bravely Default takes from it a bit. But I did play the demo. I have to say, it's got a little bit of ways. <laughs> they got they got to um, take some time to polish things up. And that, I mean, this is a demo and they're asking for feedback. So I understand that it's not perfect. I think Octopath Traveler was a li little bit like that. It wasn't all the way smoothed out. There's a few issue issues with the demo here and there. But overall, it, it's it's still fun. It, if you play Bravely Default, it's like, oh yeah, this is Bravely Default in HD, without question. The music is tremendous. The music is just off the wall, is gorgeous. The one complaint I have with the demo, and they already mentioned it in, in the actual demo, they say, hey, the difficulty has been turned up a bit, so we just want you to get a good feel for the combat and just play around and stuff like that. Oh, boy, oh boy, boy. It's not so much that enemies are OP per se, it's more that they become quite resistant to your <laughs> attacks. Like, there's some enemies that just take forever to kill, and then they, can, they if you're not careful, they'll wipe you out. When you don't have enough resources, and you're struggling to find a way to not have to run back all the way to town when you're in the middle of a dungeon, that's not fun. That's, that's tedious. That difficulty is a bit much, in my opinion. Again, the game will fix that, so I don't know why I'm even complaining about it. <laughs> but that's okay. Definitely try the demo for yourself, and be, yeah, be aware that there is a, a bit of a difficulty spike compared to other JRPGs. For some of you, that'll be just the way you like it. Smash, uh, so, I don't think anybody saw this coming at this point in time. I remember when we were doing the Virtual Boys and we had Smash discussion podcasts, predictions and whatnot, a lot of us thought that ARMS was almost a shoe in to be in the original cast. Little did we know that development-wise, you know, the roster was decided years before ARMS had, would officially come out. So there's no way that it technically would have been in the first original roster. And I think when DLC Wave 1 came through, I think most of us were thinking, and most of us in the community, I mean, were thinking that this is supposed to only be third party or, you know, series that are not typical. Or the speculation within the community was that the DLC would be third party. And obviously that was wrong. Byleth definitely proved that wrong. But at the same time, we just thought the arms ship had sailed. You know what I mean? arms support had kind of died they had their final tournament things and it just felt like that the time to bring in arms character was done well not so says sakurai and nintendo as they have like a, a new tournament you know a free trial thing going on and uh, you know trying to remind you that arms is not dead <laughs> arms is a thing don't forget about me and yeah it's good I, i'm really happy for the arms fans i made a video towards beginning of the channel's life called uh is arms fun i know great title so you can check out my full thoughts by watching that video but to get, just to give a brief summary i like a lot of arms but I, one i think the content is a bit lacking and two the content that's there is not appealing to someone who enjoys playing by themselves and yes it's a fighting game what are you talking about playing by yourself i mean like the single player content it doesn't grip you it's just the, it's incredibly repetitive and nothing really changes that much within combat Maybe that's a sign that I just need to get good, need to get better, then I'll find more enjoyment. If I'm not having fun, why bother? You know what I mean? But what I will say about ARMS is the character design and the, and the concepts, the charm of the game is incredible. So I'm really happy to see it in Smash. I'm really happy for the Smash fans, or for the ARMS fans. They've definitely been pushed to the side as of late, but now, now is their time to shine. So that said, who is in? I'm hoping it's not Spring Boy, Spring Man, whatever his name is. I mean, there's some people who like Spring Boy. Hey, you know, if that's your thing, that's your thing. I'm thinking it's either Twintel, Min Min, or Ninjata. I say those because Ninjata was pretty popular towards the beginning, and even even towards the end, he kept some popularity. Twintel was obviously a vocal favorite. I don't know how favorite she was in the actual ARMS community. I think for people who just like character designs, they're like, ooh, Twintel, woohoo! She's got a big butt. <laughs> and, and other and other features, I understand that. But I think Twintel would be a good addition. I, I would personally like to see it. I think my number one hope is Min Min. One, because she won the tournament at the end of the ARMS online stuff. But I also really like her design. I think she has one of the best designs in the game and would be really fun. 
another option could be that they're just eight different skins all from arms and they don't really have one character that is the character. That's a bit of a cop out and maybe not something that Sakurai himself would do because we never had character slot is just the series. You know what I mean? I guess technically you could do for some of for some of the Marth clones, you can just say Fire Emblem and pick between the <laughs> between the Marth clones. But anyway, I don't know if they would go that route with ARMS. They could have Spring Boy be the main Spring Boy and Spring Girl be the main two. And then the other six skins are just different characters they choose. I'm hoping it's they just choose one character and maybe make callbacks to the other in some way or form. There's interesting things they can do with their movesets. They could take the different arms and have them attach them to different specials, or maybe there's some kind of comboing going on with that. We'll see. I, I, I trust Sakurai to come up with a pretty unique moveset, as he say, stated on Twitter. So, here's hoping. L uh, lastly about that is the people saying we finally have arms music. Yeah, it's nice to have a couple tracks, but if you've actually listened to the soundtrack of ARMS, it's just the same theme, just different remixes. And it kind of gets <laughs> kind of gets on my nerves. Just make it stop! Get out of my head! Ring Fit Adventure updates. This is a game that obviously is doing incredibly well. You can't even fight it on the store shelves. It's it's doing that well. I mean, we're not talking Mario Kart 8 numbers here, but it's it's impressive. I mean, the, it it could end up rivaling um, the Wii Fit era, uh, although I, I don't think the numbers are quite there. But the way that this has impacted uh, the casual gamer, if you will, um, is is great. And I, I think this is exactly the demographic Nintendo was trying to go for. I've talked about this in my Game of the Year video, so please take a look when you when you can. That rhythm game looks a lot of fun. It's a great way to get people moving when most of us are stuck indoors and can't really go outside. So this is another way to add some exercise and fun to our lives. Um, and they finally added a jogging section. Oh my goodness, I, I mentioned this in my in that, in that video I, I said earlier. I, I really wanted a, a mode where I can just run around this gorgeous world and not have to worry about too many obstacles or enemies. And it looks like this is exactly it. I'm happy with that and you know, great music and beautiful colors it'll be good i may pick up ring fit again because <laughs> i definitely put it down with all the games i had to play and and whatnot no you're just lazy okay well you didn't have to say that but sure also they gave the partner ring a female voice which is good for options but oh man it, she grades on my ears i'm sorry to whoever does that but that is that was not the choice to make <laughs> The guy voice was kind of annoying, but not unbearingly so. Like, it, it was more of like, you're too, a little too chipper for me, but it, it's bearable. Like, I'm not, not too bad. Um, I, I don't like it when he says my sweat is all shiny and beautiful. That, that really creeps me out, so don't do that. But the girl, maybe it's just some of the lines she says, but it just, it just like makes my ears hurt. So, yeah. But hey, if people rather have, you know, a shrill voice telling them to work out, that's fine. At least I can switch to Japanese and get some quality Japanese voice acting work there. Can the Japanese voice actress for Mercedes be my personal trainer? Because I would really be motivated if she was. Clubhouse Games 51 Classics. This is okay. Yeah, I mean, you know, you got some cool games, but it's nothing that- Oh my gosh, Tanks is back! The best game on Wii Play right there. Played it for hours trying to get past those cursed purple tanks. Oh, the memories, the memories. I was not great at it. I never got to 100. I think the maximum was 100 levels. I never got it quite there. Um, I don't even know what number I got to. All I know is those purple tanks were evil, and there was even worse ones after that, apparently. I loved that, and I loved Wii Play in general. So seeing a game like this where it's not, the, it's not quite the same, and it, it, definitely a lot more games, but different type of uh, personality and and UI, if you will. It's definitely a set of games that you're meant to take with you on the go and not necessarily just sit at the TV and play. But at the same time, there's 51 games on there. So you can find a plethora of games that you can play at home or you can play on the go, play by yourself, play online. It's fantastic. So usually a game like this, I wouldn't be too hyped about, but there's there are some like fairly interesting ones in there. Because of that, I am strongly considering picking this up, not just because of tanks, but there's some other ones that I really like. Some games that you don't see virtually that I would be interested in playing, like War. Oh my gosh, I love War. Some of the, some of the games are a little crazy, like 
Dots and boxes? Really? Just grab a piece of paper. Why do you need to play that on the TV screen or on your Switch? I don't, whatever. <laughs> And then we have all the ports. There's a lot of ports coming, especially from 2K. We got Bioshock, Borderlands, XCOM, great big AAA games. Uh, last gen, granted, but still, they, um, well, most of them, but it is great to see m more variety on the Switch. To be honest, that's going to be building up 2020, or that's going to be holding up 2020 for new games. It's just going to be a lot of ports from third-party developers. And, you know, we'll see what happens in the in the second half. But the first half is really just Animal Crossing and ports. <laughs> well, and, and at Xenoblade Chronicles in May, of course. But yeah, Animal Crossing, Xenoblade, and then ports. Tokyo Mirage Sessions in, is in there as well. Point is, I hope you like ports because we're <laughs> going to get a lot of ports. But that's important because it keeps uh, giving us content. You know, we can say that Nintendo is going silent, you know, there really isn't anything to look forward to past Xenoblade, and that's true for 2020 and whatnot, but we can't say there's nothing coming. Like, you look at the Wii U, there was a gap where you could, I mean, we didn't know at the time, but looking back on it, you can tell they had switched development to the Switch, and that's why no new games really were coming for the Wii U. So it was really, like, nothing happening. But we didn't have ports and, and third-party games, or many, many Nindy games coming out at that time. So it was really a desolate wasteland for games. Like, it was a drought. Whereas now, it's it's a drought for news and for most first-party Nintendo games. But there are new games coming out every week, whether it be an indie or a third-party port. So there is something to, to feed you during this drought of Nintendo games. You just gotta hope that the games that you're interested in will come. <laughs> and to some people, that's not what's happening, but to some, it's it's working out. I know I won't be playing all these, <laughs> there's just too many, but I, I, again, I appreciate the variety. Also, there's pod racing. Huh. Now this is pod racing! Oh, and we can't forget about Catherine. That's a, that's a fairly big one. Hopefully Atlas gets on the ball. They gave us Tokyo Smart Sessions, they gave us Catherine. Hopefully we get an announcement for Persona 5 Scramble and other Persona 5 games. And then, you know, Shin Megami Tensei 5, where the heck is that? Come on, Atlas. I know, I know it's been I know it's been rough, but please, please be kind to us. <laughs> all in all, the Direct Mini was a good update video, highlighting new details on upcoming and existing games, revealing some new third-party supports, and shadow dropping a good amount of games and demos. In that regard, I'm pretty pleased with what I saw. Looking to the future of 2020, however, I'm disappointed. There's nothing to look forward to, nothing to hype up, nothing to play after Xenoblade. Except for Zelda, but we, you just never know with Zelda. Of course, the current pandemic is placing a strain on development, and like I said before, I imagine many games will be pushed back. For that reason, I'm not going to be mad, infuriated, or call out Nintendo as greedy corporate lizards. Not even Bowser. There are people behind the games we love, who have families and their own health to worry about. That, without a doubt, comes first. However, that doesn't magically make 2020 an exciting year for the Switch. In fact, this pandemic only reinforces how dry 2020 will be. Despite enjoying the updates and all that Xenoblade goodness, the Direct Mini left me worried and disappointed about the rest of the year. Now, that doesn't mean we won't get a holiday title or something in the fall of 2020, but it might not be as big as we hope. That said, here's hoping the E3 2020 presentation Nintendo had planned will bring with it some exciting news whenever they plan to release it. While the drought-ending Direct Mini left me disappointed for the future of 2020, the amount of games released during that 204 days, 3 hours, 47 minutes, and 2 seconds gap should keep me busy for a long time. And then I drop everything for the greatest game ever made! Let's go! Thank you so much for watching! Sorry for the timeliness of the video, I had hoped to get it out much sooner, like Saturday morning sooner, but alas, I am a working adult while quarantined, so yay. That said, please look forward to my next video about Xenoblade, which will take a closer look at the remake. If you liked what you heard, then please subscribe for more Nintendo goodness, and please share with your friends. We, we, have, we have fun here. Goodbye, you good people! Wah!